Good evening. Uh, you guys can hear me, right? Just confirm me. You can hear me and you can see my screen. All right, uh, let's start. <clears throat> I welcome everyone to the Business Research Project Module Briefing for Bachelor of Business Administration. I'm Dr. Suhel. I will be your module leader for this uh, subject. This presentation, it will take about uh, 50 minutes and then uh, we will proceed to the question and answer session. Meanwhile, if you do not understand anything, you can text me in the uh, chat box, right? So the module description of uh, this business research project would be the, you know, the basically focusing on a, uh, critical and important issues. Students need to undertake an effective and systematic business research. They will integrate theory and practice in their research. Students will incorporate understanding taking from a critical review of the appropriate literature. Base their project on the sound analysis and arguments. Uh, document and present the research and findings in their prescribed format of the project. Uh, here, the prescribed project, uh, prescribed format means uh, the format suggested by Brittany University. I hope all of you have completed these four modules and you will proceed with this uh, business research project. So there are basically three learning outcomes you're going to achieve in this module. Uh, upon completion of this module, students are expected to evaluate and make recommendation for organizational development relating to, to a theme or issue impacting uh, participants organization or any other organization that the student is familiar with. You are also expected to design, develop, apply, and evaluate practically and sound business research skills techniques, taking into consideration appropriate ethical, uh, commercial, confidentiality, and data protection issues why it is uh, saying the uh, ethical, commercial and confidential issues because while you are doing research, you might need to approach different companies, uh, need to request some information. So you need to maintain ethical and confidentiality for data protection as well. The last, uh, learning outcome that you are expected to achieve is critically evaluate the theme or issue impacting on business organization or business models, drawing upon and developing concepts, models, or theories to provide feasible solutions to problems, issues identified in the state organization. So while you're doing a research, of course, you need to find an issue or problem from any organization, then you will follow the research steps and you're supposed to come up with some solutions, right? That is the ultimate uh, purpose of business research. Now, this would be the content, uh, the bill area you're supposed to cover. Choose a topic and designing the project. So after today, after the, the, the briefing for expectation, of course, you are gonna develop a research proposal. So to develop a research proposal, uh, I'll get you, I will show you later on how to do that, but you need to choose a topic and design the project. Of course, the topic uh, needs to be related in the business areas. 
analyzing the literature and writing critical review. So when you are choosing a topic or problem or issue for research, you need to find uh, contemporary other researches on this. So this is called as a literature review. You need to find uh, the journals or articles on the, on the same issue that you have selected uh, from other parts of the world or maybe the same parts, uh, but uh, uh, other writers, their views, you need to uh, critically review. Then you're going to develop a conceptual uh, theoretical framework, right? So uh, you need to come up with a model and following the research methodology frameworks. Once you have done, uh, chosen your, uh, finalize your uh, research problem, and you have done a critical review or research uh, or literature review, and then followed up by your, uh, what do you call the, uh, you develop your theoretical framework, then you need to develop the questionnaire and collect the data. So after collecting data, you need to do the data analysis, interpretation, and then you will come up with your conclusion, right? So that will end your uh, project. So these are the areas you need to cover in this module. Okay, uh, this is the format uh, you need to follow in this uh, uh, business research project. Uh, format means uh, this is this is how you should look like your uh, table of content. Huh? So you will start with the abstract. Mm -hmm. Uh, any research, you need to start with the abstract. Abstract is uh, the summary of research. After going through your abstract, a reader should know what is uh, the research is all about, uh, what is a problem, and how you adopted the literature review, and what are the method you followed, and uh, what was the outcome. In briefly, in briefly, it should be. Uh, less than a page, you need to do it in an abstract. And then of course, acknowledgement. Uh, acknowledgement is uh, while you are doing research, you will have a supervisor. So you need to thank him or you need to acknowledge. You will be also liaising with the companies, uh, the other people who, will, who, are, who are helping you in this project. So you, you acknowledge in this section, this is completely yours. There is no particular rules and regulation. Uh, this is up to you how you thank uh, or acknowledge the contribution of the other people uh, in this area. Then you will start your research uh, with the chapter one. Chapter one basically is the introduction, is the main heading. Then you can add a uh, subheading, subheading like uh, background, background of your research. You can also put a problem statement. So what is the problem statement basically? A rationale of the study or significance of the study, why you have chosen this topic, why not the others? Huh? And uh, what is the expected contribution of this research? Uh, that will cover up your chapter one introduction. You can write about, talk about uh, background, uh, problem statement, significance of your study, research questions or research objectives in this chapter. Chapter two is a, a literature review. As I mentioned, in literature review, you are gonna you need to do a lot of lot of readings eh, in this uh, chapter. You need to find out the other uh, 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 other uh, articles or journals published eh, in the same area that you are going to conduct research. For example, uh, let's say you 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 are choosing a topic on. Uh, organizational uh, performance enhancement uh, for a specific company. So you need to read a lot about the organizational performance, how to, how to enhance. There are, there are thousands of articles published on this. Then you will integrate or try to link to your research, right? You will see uh, how other people doing it. So this is called actually literature review. After doing all the, after doing uh, going through all the 
contemporary researchers or the past researchers, then you need to come up with a, a particular model. Huh? Model means a research model, how or what would be your variables, uh, your uh, independent variables, dependent variables, mediating or moderating variables. And uh, uh, then you need to come up with your hypothesis uh, and the expected outcomes, right? So this chapter, you will cover all this. In chapter three, uh, we call it research methodology because uh, research can be uh, qualitative or quantitative or mixed method, right? So. At this point, uh, I mean, at the bachelor level, I will suggest all of you to go for a, a quantitative uh, method. Quantitative means uh, where you will prepare a questionnaire or survey form and you distribute among your uh, target population. Uh, and then after completion, you will collect it, you will do the data analysis, and then uh, you will do the uh, findings, and then you come up with a conclusion, right? So this is the quantitative methodology. Some students also follow qualitative. Qualitative whereby you go to your target population and you take the interview. Uh, it's not the survey form, just tick, 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 no. They will do, a, you will do a, a interview. Later, you will convert the qualitative or the interview into the, uh, you need to do the coding and into convert into, uh, uh what you call there's a software and then you will do the data analysis this is a bit complicated and uh, normally students are doing it masters or phd level right and some of the students they try to choose both that means uh, quantitative and qualitative together this is even complicated right and after uh, choosing the research methodology you also need to uh, show or tell us who are your target population? I mean, who are going to give you your uh, uh, survey answers and all, right? And then uh, you also need to show the sampling, how many people you are going to do the survey, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you also need to indicate what are the tools you are going to use for data analysis. Now, uh, tools means uh, some student they are using uh, SPSS for data analysis. Some students are using uh, smart PLS. Some students are using MOS. Depending on the nature of your uh, uh, problem or uh, no research, you can choose uh, either SPSS or smart PLS. Both are easy to go, right? So this is about research methodology in chapter three. Uh, in chapter four is your analysis and findings, right? In chapter three, uh, you, you, you choose the quantitative or qualitative or mixed method. Then let's say you, you are choosing quantitative method, then you design a questionnaire. Upon approval from your supervisor, you are ready to distribute among your uh, population. Then you collect back, right? Then when you collect back, you start your chapter four. That means your analysis part. Yeah, as I mentioned, you, you can use any tools which is SPSS or uh, uh, SPSS or uh, uh, Smart PLS, uh, you will analyze the data. Then uh, you will interpret, and then uh, you will also uh, indicate the findings, what you have found uh, after doing the, collecting the data from the target population, right? So uh, that this is how you'll complete your chapter four, then you'll come come to chapter five. Chapter five uh, is uh, conclusion and recommendations. So uh, you see, uh, you started chapter one. Uh, at the beginning, you show what is your research problem. Uh, and you tell this, this is the research problem. Uh, this is the reason we are do, do, doing it. Now, after that, you do also uh, research uh, uh, critical review. And you, you show the views from contemporary other researchers then you follow research methodology and you do the analysis. Now it's you for you, you got the result. So you need to see whether problem statement or the research objective has met or not, right? And then uh, you need to come up with your recommendation. This is completely right from your own. Huh? 
right? Uh, the how you address the problem, right? Uh, and uh, what the company or uh, the suggested organization that you have selected the problem, how they will come up with the, uh, uh, so, so how they will solve this problem, right? So you're going to recommend this. And then uh, following this with the re referencing. For referencing, I'm, I'm sure you, all of you are aware that uh, British University is, going, is following Harvard referencing style. You need to follow this. After referencing, even you can add your appendix. So in the appendix, you can add uh, your questionnaire or recommendation letter or any other letter, approval letter, et cetera, et cetera, you can put. But uh, in short, this is how your table of content should look like, right? Abstract, acknowledgement, chapter one. Now, chapter one is the main heading. Under there, there, there can be a subheading like background of the problem, uh, problem statement, uh, significance of the study, research objective, research question, et cetera, et cetera. So same as uh, literature review also is the main heading in this chapter two. So there can be many subheadings uh, related to your research. Chapter three also same. Uh, this is the main heading. You can do many subheadings, as many as you want. Uh, you feel it is uh, rational to do it. Then uh, chapter four, chapter five is also same. These are the main headings. You can add your subheadings. So referencing, and also you can add is uh, what you call uh, appendix. This is optional. Now, specific requirements for a research project, uh, right? Uh, you need to understand these few slides very carefully. That will help you to write properly and uh, now probably giving gives you a, a chance of good grading. Through a rigorous and well organized, it involves undertaking systematic research, right? Systematic research, uh, uh, I mean, any business research or institutional research or formal research, there is a system you need to adopt. I showed you earlier that you start with introduction, then you go for literature review, then methodology, then analysis, and then uh, uh, recommendation, conclusion and recommendation. So this is basically a system. Uh, so you need to follow the steps. Use appropriate methods to systematically collect analysis data. In chapter three, uh, chapter three you, you, you saw that I have, uh, and I have discuss, uh, discussed about three methods uh, people or the students are going to choose for uh, uh, research methodology that can be quantitative, qualitative, and mixed method. It will argue why the results obtained are meaningful and explain any limitations that are associated with them, right? So based on the method, actually justify why you are choosing. So in chapter three, you need to justify this. Why, if you are choosing quantitative, you need to say why. If you are choosing qualitative, you need to also explain why, right? And then critically examine the relevant research, uh, literature and research. You also need to demonstrate uh, the capacity for rigorous analysis, uh, perspective observation and critical assessment. So in data analysis, there are certain uh, areas that you need to cover it up. Display a clear and coherent expression, discussion and presentation in the chapter five. Analyze and develop issues arising from the research and make appropriate recommendation for the further improvements here. So these are the areas uh, you need to look into this, right? Now, uh, for your research, there's only one component, which is uh, uh, your research project. Uh, research project, the word count is between seven to 8,000 plus minus 10%, right? So anything that between seven to 8,000 is fine. And remember your word count will start from your introduction until conclusion or chapter five. Your uh, referencing uh, is not included in the word count, right? So student upon attendance of the research methodology workshop, either online or face-to-face, -face, are required to complete their submit the research project between three months after or uh, no, maximum of three, six months. So uh, once you submit your uh, proposal and you get your supervisor, so you are ready to start your work and then, uh, you need to complete within six months, right? 
So let's say you completed after four months, you are ready to submit. All right. We 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 do not advise you to wait until uh, at the six month. So you need to start it uh, as soon as is possible. As soon as you are done with your research proposal, uh, then uh, try to complete everything by within within five months. Still, you have one month time. If any major corrections or anything coming from your supervisor, you still have time. So do not wait until the six months, right? But uh, the standard time is three to six months. You cannot submit uh, even if you're ready before month three. And uh, after month six, also you'll be penalized, right? Now, there are some guidelines for your supervisors and the rules and regulations, right? What the student expect from their supervisor, right? Uh, your supervisor, of course, he or she will guide your work. Uh, they will read and they will do your recommendations, right? And uh, you can do a formal meeting with them. You can do a constructive uh, discussion with them. The supervisor have to good knowledge and research process. Of course, uh, the supervisor will be allocated based on your research uh, proposal uh, based on the topic. The receipt of the work sent electronically will be acknowledged and the maximum of working, uh, okay, right. Uh, all the standard communication channel is to emailing. So uh, you can be, uh, you can you can send your draft uh, uh, to your supervisor through email. Uh, what we experienced in previous time that uh, student want to do rush. That means uh, I send it uh, to my supervisor today. I'm expecting uh, my supervisor will give feedback by tomorrow. It, it, it doesn't work like that way. Because you remember that uh, you are a single student, a supervisor may have some other students. So what we suggest, give at least a week time for supervisor to read your work and get back to you. Bear in mind. Uh, now, what is the expectation from the student, uh, uh, the supervisor expectation from the student, right? Uh, supervisor that their student will be independent learner, I mean, a student will start their own initiative. Student uh, produce and submit a work at least 48 hours before the scheduled meeting. Let's say you have a meeting with your supervisor, so you need, you need, to, you need to send your uh, draft, whatever chapter one, chapter two, or whatever the chapter you have done, at least 48 hours before the meeting so that uh, your supervisor have enough time, he can go through your work, he can uh, give you uh, feedback so that you can improve. The student listen to the advice and make informed decision before accepting or rejecting it. The student also accept its responsibility to take the initiative for arranging meetings with the supervisor now. Uh, it's not the supervisor who will push you to come for a meeting. Uh, it is it, it, the student responsibility eh, uh, to find a suitable time with the supervisor and arrange meeting and students need to take this initiative. In case of remote campus, students can do also responsible to the regular electronic transmission of their work in progress, right? Basically, uh, uh, in, after the first meeting with the supervisor, uh, you can communicate regularly uh, through email. You can uh, send him the draft chapter by chapter and then over all. Student uh, also make and keep appointments, give adequate notice, huh? a minimum of 24 hour cancellations, right? Uh, if any emergency comes up, you also need to inform. Uh, it would be no all nice uh, that uh, uh, there's a meeting scheduled and you are absent because of your urgency or anything, uh, but you didn't inform your supervisor. This is uh, quite bad, right? Uh, so you need to bear in mind that uh, uh, your supervisor also uh, having some other students, other responsibilities, so you need to respect it. Student must be honest when they're reporting the progress, right? So you you, you should not uh, give any wrong information regarding uh, your progress. You should be always honest with your supervisor. Now, what the supervisor is responsible for? Uh, some student actually are mistaken here. They think that uh, supervisor, your proofreader, no. Your supervisor is not your proofreader. 
your supervisor is to go through your work and give a constructive feedback mm, and uh, guide you. So collaborating with the student to produce a research timetable, he would, or she would be advising the structure of the project, feasibility of the methodology, right? Let's say uh, you choose a methodology, so your supervisor will guide you. This is the right or this is the wrong, or you should do this or you should not do this, right? So uh, he will he will be your critics uh, of your uh, research. So he will give his criticism chapter by chapter. He will be also giving uh, advice regarding the submission of the project, right? And he will be guiding through. Uh, please note that uh, your supervisor is not responsible for designing the field work. Field, field work means where to go and collect your uh, uh, data, right? And he will do with you now. Uh, he is also not responsible for editing or proofreading uh, of the student project. And supervisor is also not responsible for arrangements of meetings. So it would be a student responsibility to take the initiative uh, and arrange meetings with the supervisor. I also note that the frequency of the meeting will be decided between the student and supervisor, at least uh, two progress report. Uh, you can see this uh, progress uh, report uh, template in your uh, LMS, uh, student uh, learning management system in your student portal, right? Sorry. Hmm. So, uh, and it will be required of uh, what you call the progress report you need to submit twice. Uh, Please remember that it is your responsibility and yours alone to maintain a regular contact with your supervisor. Some of the comment and advice arises from the above. It is essential that you make use of a spell and grammar check, right? Uh, very often we notice the students uh, make mistakes uh, in the grammar and spelling error. That will also reduce your marks, uh, the total weightage. Do not expect your supervisor will correct your English users and spelling that is not their responsibility what they will do however is to tell you if your work is uh, deficient in the, these areas you are also responsible for ensuring that uh, your work is up to expected standard of the area yeah. now rules governing contact with the supervisor Another area that problem related to the fact of some of the student for various reasons, uh, uh, this is uh, from our previous experiences, fail to maintain a regular contact with their supervisor. Uh, this practice can have several outcomes uh, and depending on the severity and attract the penalties. Uh, the most serious outcome, the lack of contact with the supervisor when the student attempt to submit completely unsupervised projects. That is in the whole period of your uh, your project you didn't contact with supervisor suddenly you are sending all the chapters together so such projects are, will not be accepted for consideration for the award of baba i mean the bachelor of business administration and the research project must be supervised supervised so uh, bear in mind huh? you cannot suddenly send all the chapters huh, uh, without proper consultation with the supervisor even the university also won't accept it. Uh, remember the regular contact issues, the supervisor that the work you are submitting to them is not plagiarized from the work of the other students. Now, before final submission, you need to do a, a plagiarism check to ensure that uh, uh, this is not a copy or you know, the, the taken from the other students or other people work, right? University regulations, pertinent to plagiarism are detailed in the appendix two. So this is also mentioned in your student portal in the introduction uh, area, you can go through. Now, ethical consideration. Once your supervisor is appointed, you are advised to make contact with him or her as soon as it is uh, practical, all right? This should be uh, both parties uh, convenience time, I mean, uh, student also, the, the students who are working, but then you need to write to your supervisor, find a, a suitable time that is convenient for both parties. 
There are other two broad categories into uh, which uh, Baba Research Project uh, fits low risk and high risk. This overwhelming majority of Baba projects are low risk. Low risk in a sense that uh, any scientific research you do in the lab and there are a lot of restriction. So there's a high risk. But business research project, you can uh, choose at your own freedom, uh, what is your research problem, what the organization, which organizers to choose or not to choose. And uh, before considering any company, you need to uh, think the the excess of data or excess of information is it difficult or easy or moderate is it possible or not so these all things actually you can decide so that's why we said it is low risk all the baba students are required to comply with the universal prescribed code of ethics uh, when undertaking this uh, research right now submission of a draft research project all the students who progress to this Baba research project are given opportunity of handing a draft copy of final document. Your supervisor will advise you in a good time as to the at least a date when you can do this. The date set depend on the allowing sufficient time. Uh, your research supervisor to read your draft and comment on it. Right, as mentioned, do not send all five chapter together. What you do, you send chapter by chapter. And then uh, it would be easy for uh, you and your supervisor both. Mm -hmm. Then uh, for final uh, feedback, you should give at least a week time. So your supervisor will comment on it. Then after correction, you are ready to submit, allowing sufficient time for you to take account of any comment suggestion made by your supervisor so that you can incorporate any required changes into your final comment. Submission of the final research. The specific date of for your handing in your uh, final project is generally depend on the up and the graduation event for which you are aiming in, right? Uh, in your student portal, you can see the the last date of your submission. Uh, why we are reminding this again and again is we want you to graduate on time. The moment you miss a date, uh, you are not gonna uh, graduate on time. So it will take additional semester uh, or time to to do your uh, what do you call uh, graduation. There will be uh, other times agreed on ad hoc basis. If one of this time applies to you, you will be informed. Regardless of what date applies, you will be informed in a good time so the, to the specific date when you are required to submit your work. This date is final and non-negotiable. However, in extenuating circumstances, your supervisor may advise you to apply for a short extension. In all cases, the extension granted would mean that you will submit for the next graduation date after one that is previously allocated. You see, uh, even in your emergency cases, although a short period recommended by your supervisor extension or a short extension order you know, is accepted by the university, bear in mind uh, you won't be graduated on time. So it will take uh, another semester for you guys. So it will be a waste of time. Now, marking guidelines, right? So your uh, research will be marked by your supervisor. In another words, your supervisor will be your first marker. The second marker is another research supervisor. Both marker assess your work independently. When the research project has been read and marked by both assessor independently, do they agree to get together to discuss your work and agree a final mark, right? Should both markers find a difficulty in agreeing final mark, third marker will be eh, necessary to, although it is not the case is happening regularly. So in, in summary, your project will be marked by the two different lecturers eh, or supervisors. First marker is your supervisor that will supervise you or guide you through the project. Second marker normally is another supervisor who is also experienced in the same uh, area that you are going through, right? Uh, and then they will agree to a final mark. Let's say first marker and second marker cannot agree to each other, there will be a third marker. But it, this doesn't happen uh, easily, right? A sample project mark sheet uh, that details the assessment criteria is shown in the next slide. Okay. Now, 
how your uh, your uh, the allocation uh, chapter by chapter you see your abstract and acknowledgement will be five percent your introduction will be ten percent literature review fifteen percent research methodology is twenty percent analysis and findings thirty percent conclusion and recommendation ten percent referencing five percent and presentation of the word count compliance right uh, remember it's a seven to eight thousand words huh? so uh, anything if it is significantly short up uh, you may uh, the penalty would be higher you may fail in this project but uh, uh, a little shorter no it it can give you the five percent extra marks right uh, this is the screenshot for of your student portal uh, you should uh, know you should be aware of this uh, in your introduction part, you can see that uh, there's a welcoming note, uh, appendixes, uh, referencing system, right? And then your plagiarism declaration form, uh, research submission cover sheet, uh, and the module specification, all the informations are there. Even you can um, get some other notes on the uh, research uh, methodology, literature review, how to develop your problem statement, how to develop your framework, all right? And how to do your research design, everything, all the informations are in, available in uh, your, your portal. So you can go by lecture by lecture, lecture two to lecture eight, uh, you will get the complete uh, information. There are some additional information from the other lectures you can go through. In your research, uh, what you call the resources, you can also, uh, you will have the electronic books on research methodology, so you can go through. Now, we advise our students to follow uh, eight stages, huh? because we believe that a student who follow these eight steps, huh, they will never go wrong, right? So this is a tips, a short tips for you to follow. Number one, establish a general field of interest. I mean, you have completed your uh, four modules, four dot modules, and then uh, you know your experience in marketing or uh, management or uh, uh, or finance or accounting. You know your area, the area of your interest huh, that you are confident with, and uh, you need to develop a proposal. So once your proposal is accepted, you can discuss with your supervisor. Mm -hmm. So this is this would be your initial stage or stage one. Then stage two, undertake a background of reading of your research area, consider the appropriate research. Mm -hmm. So you need to do a lot of readings. You need to see what are the other researchers have done so far in the same area and the same topic, right? So you will have an idea what to do now. In stage three, you define your ideas into develop a research proposal and give it to a title, uh, decide the most appropriate method for gathering data, questionnaire or interviews, right? Now, it is, you will be still com uh, continue reading yeah? and then uh, you will finalize your, uh, uh, of course, in chapter one, in, in stage one, you, you are going to establish a general field of interest and then uh, you do a lot of readings in stage three, you will be finalizing, you'll be finalizing your uh, research uh, area. In stage four, we are recommending to prepare information or gathering tools or questionnaire or interview, right? So once you are done with your, uh, uh, done your reselecting uh, topic and you do a lot of background reading, which is a part of literature review, and then uh, you come up, you finalize your research uh, uh, topics, right? Then uh, uh, you have enough information about that. Uh, then you also need to prepare your questionnaire. Uh, how you're going to collect your data? Uh, uh, how you want to you want to justify your problem? Uh, how you want to uh, view the other people' uh, uh, opinion? Uh? So uh, that would be in stage four. In stage five, you are going to collect data for your research project. So. Uh, before that, of course, you will find which company you want to go uh, the, the way. Uh, remember that here, before collecting data, you need to write them officially, uh, that uh, you are a business research uh, student, uh, you are 
student of University of Brittany. Then you are doing a research on the same area. So you need the information. You need to write it to the HR people. So upon approval or upon given the uh, permission, uh, you can collect the data. Then uh, stage six, you will um, uh, do analysis, uh, draft results chapter. Your literature review should be 90% written by this stage, right? In chapter four, yes, it should be 90% done. And then you will proceed to draft uh, uh, analysis of the conclusion of the chapter. And remember earlier I have mentioned each chapter you are done, you, need, you can show to your supervisor. Then stage is finish writing the project and submit, eh? you are uh, ready to submit your uh, thesis. So these are the eight stages we recommend to our students to follow step by step. We believe those who are following these eight steps, uh, they will never go wrong. Now, so that's all about this, uh, what you call uh, uh, the research, uh, how to select topics and all, and there's some steps. Now, this is some additional information uh, giving to you guys, right? Uh, research, uh, you can unmute your mic and respond, or you can also respond in the chat box. What is your idea of research, anybody? You can answer to this. What is the research to you? I'm waiting for your response. Huh? Yeah. You can unmute your mic and uh, respond, or you also can respond in the chat box. All right, so basic, basically uh, research is, uh, yeah, Paolo said investigating into a particular topic, yes, yes. Uh, of course, uh, research is an investigation to a, a topic, but if you look into the word research, research, that means searching again uh, on the area, searching again, why, uh, yeah, correct. Uh, you see, using the resources and materials, right? Uh, the sonar said, finding solution to existing or potential issues of uh, business. Yes, this is also correct. Uh, uh, research is to find solutions huh? uh, to existing or potential issues. It can be existing issues or it can be new issues. For example, uh, COVID-19, huh? uh, this was completely new issue and then vaccine vaccination was uh, a solution so uh, the scientists level uh, they discovered or invented the vaccine uh, and they have invented yeah so uh, in all right to reach our conclusion and find the facts yes uh, this is also right okay i think you have uh, thank you you guys uh, you have done a good job now in a simple terms to search again is a research, huh? but it has to be rigorous and systematic inquiry. Right? You got a problem, you you can you can find a solution. Uh, that is also right. But following a systematic uh, process, uh, discovery the results. So research is uh, an organized and systematic and uh, finding an answer to your questions, right? Finding answer in chapter one, I have told you guys, uh, you, there will be a section where about research questions or research objectives. Huh? So in chapter five, you need to, you need to uh, while you're doing your conclusion, you need to tell the reader that that was your research question and this is the answer, huh? right? Uh, and that was the research objectives you said initially and you have met your research objectives, right? So this is uh, the research all about. Now, research has to be systematic. Uh, what does it mean to be systematic? That there is a definite set of procedure and steps which you will follow, which are always uh, done in order to get the most accurate results, right? 
Uh, remember in the table of content there in chapter three, I showed literature uh, uh, research methodology, right? Now, if you choose a wrong methodology, it will never give you the right or correct results, right? So the methodology has to be uh, correct. Correct in the sense that whatever you want to census or your information, right, uh, it can be quantitative. But if you want to get a people personal opinion and all, it has to be qualitative, that is interview, right? Or, or taking interview, the information you get, you cannot get it through using the survey. Survey is mostly yes or no, XD or disagree, right? Whereby quantitative or interview will give you a lot more information, personal opinion and all, right? So that is the systematic. So a, 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 a research has to follow a steps of a, a systematic uh, approach. Now, secondly, your, your research has to be organized. There's a structure or method in doing research. It is a planned procedure and focused or to a specific scope, right? Uh, so I showed you the st structure. You will start with the abstract, then you go for acknowledgement, then you will write chapter one to five, then you will go for referencing appendix if necessary. So these are all organized way of direction. Finding answer. This is the end of all research, whether it is the answer to a hypothesis or even a simple question. Research is successful when you find the answer. Basically, uh, if you don't find a solution or an answer, this is not a very successful research. I mean, uh, there are researches whereby they do not come with a definite answer. So in that case, they recommend for further research, right? So, in order to be uh, uh, very focused, you need to find your answer. So when you find your answer, we can say that you know, it, this is how you have uh, used your time and effort, and uh, this is something meaningful. In, uh, after that, the questions, this is the central to a research. If there is no question, there is no answer of use. Without a question, research has no focus, no drive, or no purpose. So in the chapter one, you need to set a research questions, right? So, and in chapter five, two, you will show the answer after going through your literature review, after going through your uh, methodology, after doing your analysis, you will come up with uh, what you call uh, the answers. So you must have research questions and research objectives, and you must have the answers. If no, there is no research basically. Now, so this is the scientific method. We are calling scientific method, scientific, what is scientific method? So it evolves these uh, uh, few uh, uh, circles, right? So a research comes or starts with the observation. Initially, uh, I hope you remember that uh, you will find a topic based on your experience, based on your observation, based on your expertise, right? Based on the topic that you are you're confident and you're comfortable, right? So based on that, you will identify. You observe there might be an issue uh, and uh, you have determined uh, your observation, then come up with some questions. If I do this, what will happen? Why is happening this, uh, all right? What is the the uh, the next move? Uh, basically, there are, you can choose uh, questions, or we can we call it research questions, right? Then you will search literature. Okay, uh, in the same scenario, in the same situation, the same problem. What are the other researchers else tell? How they come up with the solution? What are their findings? Then you go for your hypothesis. So this is your problem. So based on the existing literature, if you do this, the result will be this. If you do that, the result will be do, the, the, might be, uh, possibly will be uh, these results. 
So you, you are gonna develop your uh, hypothesis, then the experiment. Experiment means you are creating your uh, questionnaire, you're going to distribute, right? Then uh, you collect data, you do analysis, you do, you come to conclude and come up with recommendation. Of course, you will share your result, you publish your results, huh? then develop interventions and new, ask new questions. That means the same circle will continue, right? So this is the scientific method of research. Uh, I believe I come to an end of this uh, session today. Uh, now, if I, after going through all these things, uh, if I define again, uh, uh, research is a scientific process that validates and refines existing knowledge and generate new knowledge. This is very uh, key two things uh, you need to rem remember that uh, research refines existing knowledge and generate new knowledge that directly or indirectly influence your work or practice. Uh, remember, if there is no uh, refinement of existing knowledge or current knowledge, and if there is no generation of new knowledge, this is not a research. This is not a research at all, right? So with that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think I am done with this. Uh, I, I wish good luck of your research. Uh, now I open uh, you guys for your uh, Q and A session. Huh? Any question? I think only few or four, four or five of you here. So I start with uh, Paula. Uh, you can unmute and talk if you have any questions. Hi. Good night. You're hearing me, right? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, is it mandatory to choose an organization to, to do your research to get your um with, with regards to your proposal to get your topic? Okay. All right. Uh, or can now, you choose any topic related to business? Uh, your research area should be within the your uh, business scope. The scope is uh, the uh, your student of a business. So any area you think pertaining to business, you can go ahead. Now, for choosing a company, uh, it is not mandatory. But then uh, you need to bear in mind if you select an issue from where you are going to collect data. If there is any other sources, you can justify. You can go ahead. There is no issues on that. I hope I answer your. Oh, okay, thank. Yes. Okay. Okay. Question. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um. Also, also for the proposal, um, right. is there a word limit? Uh, proposal. There is a word limit. Uh, it can be you no know, five to uh, eight or nine hundred words. It is a simple uh, one or two pages. Oh. Yeah. There is a format. Oh. Uh, there, there is a. Thank Proposal format, you can look into your student portal. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So I move to uh, Aisha, you can unmute your uh, and go. I am, I don't have any questions at the moment. I think I'm um, okay. Paul, I kind of covered. Um, what I wanted to find out. All right, all right. Okay, then uh, Lucinda, I said I cannot talk because I'm at the shift office. Okay, all right. Now I need all of your favor. I shared a link uh, in the chat box. Uh, this is the standard uh, feedback form that uh, university practices. We want your feedback so that we can improve further one. So it will take about two two minutes. Uh, you fill up, and then we end our session today. Thank you. <laughs>